Hello, MUS 2020 students, and welcome to the third in the series of videos on audio effects in Ableton Live. This video is going to focus on dynamic effects. Dynamic effects alter the volume of the incoming audio signal. These are really easy to overlook, but are also extremely important in creating a balanced mix and in making sure that you don't accidentally leave something too quiet or too loud, thus inadvertently distorting the audio or masking something. Let's start with probably the most well-known, the compressor. The compressor squashes the dynamic ceiling of the input signal to make everything sound quieter by reducing the difference between the loudest point and the softest point. You set a dynamic threshold where it will begin. Here it's zero dB, so you can see that everything's passing through. I'm going to reduce that. And you can see now I've got some stuff happening up here on this orange line. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ratio knob. The ratio controls the ratio of input to output. So with a ratio of 4 to 1, for every 1 dB of input over the threshold, or sorry, for every 4 dB of input over the threshold, it only outputs 1 dB. So this is really useful because it allows us to compress the dynamic range from the quietest point to the lowest point. But you're saying, okay, that's great, so... You make the rate between lower and higher dynamics smaller, but uh, but what can you do with that? Well, the answer is that then I can click on Makeup, and I can apply Makeup Output Gain. Which, because I've compressed things, it makes it sound like everything is perceptibly louder. Um, I'm going to set that to negative three. That's usually a good makeup gain level. But you still need to monitor how loud it's getting. Ear fatigue is real, and this is the device that will make everything perceptibly louder, and you'll start hearing less fine details the more you do that. So be careful of how loud you set it. If you're using the makeup, make sure that your output is limited to something below 0 dB. Kind of on the opposite end of the compressor is the gate. Uh, this is really, really underused, and it's potentially super useful. Basically, like a compressor, you set a threshold. However, if your notes are below that threshold, they're just cut out. You won't hear them. If I lower my threshold, you can hear some, but not all. Why ever would you want to use that? Uh, well, it's really useful if you have background noise on a track that you don't want to hear. This will reduce a lot of that if it's a very quiet uh, amount of noise in the background. Super useful, um, very, very powerful, very underused. Finally, we have probably the single most essential dynamic plugin, the limiter. It's really simple. You set the absolute volume ceiling of your audio signal. So it defaults to negative 0.3 decibels. Then that is the max that will come out of that signal chain. That's it. No matter how much I hit, no matter how hard I go, I can even crank the gain all the way up. I am never going to exceed negative 0.3. It will just not go above that. 
This is so important because it keeps everything from distorting if you have too much. That is why I strongly recommend that in all of your projects from here on forward until the end of the semester and going beyond that until the end of your life and the end of time and the eventual heat death of the universe itself, always put a limiter on the master channel. Just make sure that that is the very last thing on the master track. You can have effects there. You can put reverb there. You can put a compressor. You can put EQ, whatever. Just end the chain at the rightmost end of it with a limiter. That will save your ears and your speakers and your listeners.